We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Sterling, Kansas, and we get to visit with the head coach for the Sterling College Warriors, Coach Darren Jackson, who is heading into his third season with the program. Coach, it's a privilege to have you on the broadcast today. I want to talk about a couple of things from the spring really quickly, and we'll start with spring practices. I know when you got there a couple of years ago, I mean, you had to hit the ground running. Uh, got there after spring break, and so, you know, it might not have been as settled. Last year, you start settling a little bit more. Does it really feel like you've settled in now and practices uh, uh, going smoothly? Talk about that. Uh, first of all, th thank you for having me. Um, really do appreciate it. Uh, and yes, yes, uh, it was. Uh, I got hired after spring break, and it was definitely hit the ground running, trying to get a staff together, um, offensive going, defense going. And so this spring felt really well, felt really good. Um, we had a lot of retention at over 105 guys being able to participate. Um, and so it, it was a really good spring game, a really good spring practice. We came out healthy. Uh, we came out with guys understanding um, uh, the defensive scheme and the offensive uh, scheme. And it, it felt really good where we're headed. Man, with that kind of retention, Coach, I mean, leading to the next question, I, I was like to talk about the recruits because, again, that's another area where, you know, you have to settle in over time. It's probably starting to look a little bit more like your team now uh, in, in your time there. But with that kind of retention, uh, what kind of recruiting class do you have and, and how many of them came in? Uh, I'm, ex I'm excited. Uh, we, we, my first year, uh, well, going in my second year, my first class, we brought in 65 uh, this class is a little bit smaller, around 40, 45, which is okay. It's not a bad deal, um, but I'm excited. Uh, we, we ended up picking up a 2024 three-star uh, corner out of Phoenix, Arizona, uh, Jacoby Spence. Um, he had uh, some FBS and a couple Power 5 offers um, that fell through the cracks. Um, I was able to go out there and do an at-home visit when him and his mom and dad over. Um, he came on a visit. He liked it. He committed. And um, I'm excited to have him come in as a corner um, out of that class, um, a true freshman corner out of that class. So it's exciting to have him on board. Um, and then we we ended up going to uh, North Dakota, Dakota and getting a solid, a really solid uh, linebacker, Vaughn, from up there um, is going to help uh, right away. Uh, we were able to get some transfers in, um, some tr uh, grad transfer running back, and then a transfer from Southern um, Utah. Uh, those are my connections out there. And so I'm excited for that. Um, he's a running back. Uh, he started out at AU, played running back at Southern Utah. And now he's going to be running back for us for the next two seasons. That sounds really exciting, Coach. And I, I know you, you've you had stops all over. So you talk about having connections out there. Wow. I mean, you know, it's almost one side of the country to the other. How, how big is that, by the way, to have that, that kind of recruiting connection? It, it makes it um, fun and it makes it easy um, because now you can you can relate to, to, to all sides. You can relate to West Coast, Central and Eastern um, United States when it comes to recruiting. You can go into homes. You can talk to high school coaches because they've seen you before or they know of you just because of where you've been at your background. So, it, you know, when, when somebody asks me, uh, what do you recruit? I say I nationally recruit. I really mean it <laughs> when I say that because I've been just about everywhere. Uh, that that is awesome. Well, right here in the heart of the country, right now at Sterling, Kansas. So let's let's talk about the offense a little bit. Preview the twenty four season. Uh, one of the the names on the offense, Frankie Argot, coming back now. He'll be starting third year, starting for you at center, and uh, just you you start the offensive line. Take us through your offense. Yeah. So uh, Frankie is our anchor. Um, he, he he's able to vocalize, uh, verbalize the um, blocking schemes up front. Um, he's able to communicate. Uh, with the quarterbacks. Uh, he does a great job up front. Um, and then going to quarterback, we have Rockland coming back. Um, he's more mature. Um, he, he knows how to take care of the ball more. Um, spring was really well for him. And then we're able to have uh, Jordan Slocum, who started out at Hutch Juco, went D1 and then transferred into us. He had to sit out last year. He got all that squared away. Um, so having a 6'6", 230 quarterback uh, makes a world of difference. And he had a, he had a tremendous spring this year. That's fantastic, Coach. I, listen, it, just listening to you right now, and I, I know sometimes what we get to see on the outside, we see the numbers, uh, we see a lot of things, you know, of course, obviously win-loss. Those That's the first set of numbers you're going to see coming through, and then you'll see some statistics. But it it 
you give the feel right now that it's really starting to settle in there for you at, at Sterling and, and um, you know, where, where you say, Hey, listen, now's when the results are going to start coming. Yeah. Well, well, this day and age in society, everybody uh, has that microwave uh, thought process has to be done fast, mm -hmm. fast, fast. But would you rather have a steak stuck in a microwave and, and, and cooked or warmed up or put it, have it marinated and put it on that grill and cook it where when it comes out, that, that taste and that flavor lasts longer. Now, I'm not in this thing just to, to be a flash in the pan. And it, it takes a lot to build a program that's sustainable and then it's going on year in and year out to compete for championships. And so that, that's what we're establishing and, and, and putting forth over here. And you see everything on the field, but there's a tremendous thing that's happening off the field. Uh, we had the highest uh, GPA for football as a team in school history uh, wow. this past year. Um, we have over 1,700 hours of community service work. Um, so it, it, when, it, when it's happening off the field, it's going to take care of itself on the field. It always has and always will. I like that. By the way, Coach, uh, your, your analogy does sit well with me. One of my sons-in-law is a chef, and I, I want him to cook it right. I, I want to make sure that it's done properly, and I don't want him to, him to use the microwave at all for any of what he's making when he when he takes <laughs> care of us. Uh, we're spending now with Coach Darren Jackson from Sterling College in, uh, in his third season with the program. Coach, I, so much I, I want to talk about, and, and I listen, you, you're giving me many opportunities for follow-ups. I, I want it to be about you, though, and uh, talk about defense now. You have some seniors coming back. Hunter Poland at uh, linebacker, third in the, in the conference and in tackles last year. Alan Garcia as well, all-conference all performers. And Flynn Cameron, who broke the sack record for you. These are your upperclassmen. Take us through your defense. Yeah, man. Um, uh, Hunter, when you look at him, he ain't going to wow you with size, but uh, he, he's going to be super active on the field. And um, and believe me, our, our opposing opponents had to find where he was at because he was going to be everywhere around that football and then we have the two bookends with Allen and, and then Flynn um, wreaking havoc back there, whether it's run or pass. Um, they really uh, solidified that unit. Um, and uh, Dexter Walker, our uh, starting safety in the back end, um, was honorable mention, um, leading uh, the secondary. And I'm um, looking forward to uh, said uh, uh, contributing again, and uh, Sedarian so Williams uh, contributing. And then, like I said, our, our, our newcomers coming in, especially uh, Jacoby Spence um, coming in as a freshman three-star to help right away. Um, you don't see too many of those running around on, on this level, but to get him in, I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, showcase what he has um, this upcoming year. Uh, but uh, we, we, we hired a new defensive coordinator, um, Braden Schultz. He came over from uh, Bethel College. And so I'm excited for him and what he's been doing and how he, he's coached those young men up. Uh, defensively, and like I said, spring went really well for us. You know, Coach, you, you mentioned that, and and it's not that that the, the three stars aren't there on the NAI level. I mean, they they are. I don't hear about it as often, uh, and I don't know if that's a guarded secret or if that's just something that it just doesn't get the publicity. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I um, I went out there for uh, Phoenix to to recruit, and when he reached out, I kind of looked at it like. Are you serious? <laughs> and then when he was like, oh, we're, we're eating dinner at the house, I said, I'll come over for dinner. And I sat in there and talked to the family and, um, and we were able to seal the deal. So, but yeah, and there's, 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 you're exactly right. Or, Cause Jordan Slocum is a three-star that's on our team that, um, that came from Hutch quarterback. And when he came out of high school, he was a three-star too as well. Well, coach, uh, special teams, no secret here. Trey Dixon uh, returns to the, to the program. The conference special teams player of the year in the KCAC. Uh, I played receiver for you, but really made some noise when he was a return man for you and had a couple of kickoffs returned for touchdowns. Yes, he did. Um, he sees it very well and then he hits it, uh, hits the hole. Um, there's no dancing around back there for him. He's actually, he's actually a, a tremendous track athlete as well, um, which helps um, him when you watch the film. You're looking at it, you're like, oh, he's really not running, but he is. Um, he just has a, <laughs> a glide to him when he's running. Um, so it's excited to have him back there, somebody with experience to um, return kicks. I, I know you played your college ball at Liberty, and I, I, I've, I've listened to uh, just some of the times and opportunities when you had a chance to speak. One of the things that stood out to me was PRIDE, the acronym PRIDE. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what that means for the culture there at Sterling with, with you at the helm. 
Yes, um, pride stands for passion, responsibility, integrity, determination, and excellence. Um, passion for Christ, responsibility to learn and press on towards the goal, um, integrity of being a positive role model, um, determination to give great effort and excellence in serving others. Um, as a coach, it's my responsibility to coach those young men up, uh, but it's their responsibility to take that coaching. Just like in the classroom with the professor, their responsibility to teach is the young man's responsibility to take the teaching. But we also take at the next step further in the aspect of when you don't understand something on the field and you don't understand something in the classroom, it is your responsibility to speak up because I'm not a mind, re mind reader and the professor is not a mind reader. And so um, that's huge in our program. And in uh, integrity, our, Sterling's a small town, 2,500 people. Um, so you need to act right. Everybody's going to know it. Everybody's going to see it. And, and you want to be able to protect the name on the front, but you want to definitely make sure you protect the name on the back. Um, and when we talk about determination, a lot of people look at, but determination is not only on the field, but these young men are student athletes. There's going to be classes for your major that you're going to have to take that you don't like, but you have to pass it to get your degree. So you got to have that determination to push through whatever that is. You got to have that determination pushed through. So I always tell the guys, if there's a wall in front of you. What are you going to do? Are you going to climb it? Are you going to run through it? Or are you going to dig a hole and go under it? But you got to find out a way. And in integrity is, is in serving others. Uh, is, I mean, excellent in serving others is because um, Jesus Christ walked this earth and he served. We're going to serve. We're not going to ask him for anything in return. Um, yeah. We're just going to serve and serve and serve as much as possible. Um, and, and that's what those stand on. And that honestly came from my house. Well, I have two boys, a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old, and that literally wasn't even in implemented into football. It was literally for my young my young boys um, as they go through their journeys of becoming teenagers and becoming men. And then when I got hired, I was like, why wouldn't I not use that for mm -hmm. the, the young men that I'm coaching on my program? And that's where literally it was at my house. It stayed at my house, and then I implemented it into the program. I coach the, some of the most profound things are the, the simple things like that. I mean, and if it's something you can teach your children, uh, surely, you know, college age young men can take that and run with it as well too. I like that. I, I appreciate that. I may borrow it if that's, that's okay. Fine. All right. right Might even give you credit. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how that, that plays out. You, your season gets underway and it is the final day of August. So kind of a week zero feel almost right there, but you get things going and you do it at home against a conference opponent. Now, the KCAC expanded to 12 teams, so you have the two divisions, uh, get some crossover games going early on, and then, of course, you get into divisional play after that. But you get Bethel to get things started, and it's the first time since you've been there that you get a, a home game as your season opener. Yes, correct. First home opener of the season. Um, we've always been on the road, so it's, 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 it's uh, exciting. Um, it's going to be our Warrior Fest uh, weekend as well. So there's a lot of different things, festivals going on um, to, before the game starts. So it's going to be exciting. All right, six Coach. Kickoff. Six, what did you Six o'clock kickoff. All right. Yeah. And that, as of recording here, is almost exactly three and a half months away. So uh, have a little bit more time. We're there in the summer camps. Coach Darren Jackson, I, I appreciate that. I've learned a lot more about the Warriors now, and, and I appreciate getting to visit with you today and take the time. So we want to visit with you again, but we will definitely be following the Warriors uh, over the course of this season. Coach Jackson, thank you t for taking time with us here on the Summit. Thank you for having me.